There are places that hold on to memories, places where the past and present merge in ways that defy explanation. Behind an old crumbling manor on the outskirts of the village of Willowbrook lies such a place, a garden that only comes to life under the full moon. The villagers speak of it in hushed tones, warning their children to stay away, but the stories have a way of luring the curious, the brave, and the foolish into its grasp. The moonlit garden is beautiful, yes, but it is also dangerous, a place where the shadows are deep and the spirits of the past walk among the living. The manor had stood for centuries, its one grand facade now crumbling and overtaken by ivy and decay. No one had lived there for as long as anyone could remember, and the villagers avoided it, fearing the stories of ghosts that haunted its halls. But what truly frightened them wasn't the manor itself, it was the garden that lay behind it, hidden from view by tall, wrought iron gates and overgrown hedges. They called it the Moonlit Garden because, under the light of the full moon, it would come alive in ways that no one could explain. Flowers would bloom in colors not seen in daylight, the air would be filled with the sweet scent of night-blooming jasmine, and the shadows, the shadows would move on their own, as if they were alive. Sophie had always been drawn to the manor, ever since she was a child. There was something about its desolate beauty, its forgotten grandeur, that called to her. The stories didn't scare her, they intrigued her. So on the night of the full moon, when the village was quiet and the world was bathed in silver light, Sophie decided to explore the moonlit garden for herself. She slipped through the rusted gates, the iron creaking softly in the night air, and stepped into the garden. The moment she crossed the threshold, she felt it, a change in the air, a tingling on her skin, as if the garden itself was aware of her presence. The moon hung low in the sky, its light casting the long, eerie shadows across the ground. The garden was overgrown, wild with untamed beauty. Vines twisted around ancient statues, and flowers of every shape and color bloomed in tangled profusion. The air was thick with the scent of roses and something else, something darker and more intoxicating. Sophie walked deeper into the garden, her footsteps silent on the soft earth, her heart beating faster with every step. As she ventured further, the shadows grew longer, stretching out towards her like dark tendrils. The garden seemed to shift and change around her, the paths twisting in ways that didn't make sense. She found herself standing before a large oak tree at the center of the garden. Its gnarled branches reached out like skeletal fingers. The tree was ancient, its bark rough and twisted, and at its base there was a stone bench, half buried in the earth. Sophie sat down on the bench, feeling the cold stone beneath her, and looked up at the tree. The moonlight filtered through the leaves, casting intricate patterns of light and shadow on the ground. She felt a sense of peace, as if the garden was welcoming her, inviting her to stay. But as the minute passed, the air grew colder, and the shadows began to move. At first, it was subtle, a flicker of movement out of the corner of her eye, a rustle of leaves where there was no wind. But then, the shadows began to take shape, forming figures that danced and swayed in the moonlight. Sophie watched, mesmerized, as the shadows of the people long gone began to appear, their forms translucent and ghostly, their faces lost to time. They were spirits of those who had lived in the manor, bound to the garden by an ancient curse. They moved silently, their footsteps making no sound, their eyes empty and hollow. One of them, a young woman with long, flowing hair, approached Sophie, her face filled with sorrow. Sophie felt a chill run down her spine as the woman reached out to her, her hand cold as ice. The woman spoke, her voice a whisper carried on the wind. We are trapped here, bound to the garden by the sins of our past. We cannot leave, but you, you can. Sophie tried to move, to get up from the bench, but she found herself unable to. The shadows closed in around her, their forms becoming more solid, more real. The air grew colder, and the garden, once beautiful and inviting, now felt oppressive, suffocating. She could feel the weight of the spirits pressing down on her, pulling her into their world. The young woman's face twisted in anguish, and she reached out again, her hand grasping Sophie's arm with a strength that belied her ghostly form. 
You must leave, she urged, her voice filled with desperation, before it's too late. Sophie struggled to break free, her heart pounding in her chest. The shadows were all around her now, their faces twisted and grotesque, their hands clawing at her, pulling her down. She felt herself sinking into the ground, the earth swallowing her up, the garden closing in around her. With a final burst of strength, Sophie tore herself away from the spirits and ran. She fled through the garden, the path twisting and turning in ways that made no sense, the shadows chasing her, the whispers filling her ears. She reached the gate, flung it open, and stumbled onto the street, gasping for breath, her heart racing. The garden was silent again. The shadows gone, the spirits vanished. The moon still hung low in the sky, its light now cold and distant. Sophie looked back at the manor, its windows dark and empty, and she knew she had narrowly escaped a fate worse than death. The villagers found her the next morning, wandering the streets, her clothes torn and her eyes wide with fear. She told them what had happened, but they only shook their heads, whispering among themselves. They had all heard the stories, after all. They knew what the moonlit garden was capable of. And so the garden remains, hidden behind the gates of an old manor, waiting for the next curious soul to wander too close. Because once you enter the moonlit garden, you may never leave. The spirits are always there, watching, waiting, bound to the garden by the sins of their past. And if you're not careful, you might just join them. <laughs>